Welcome back to another edition of Music Monday from the podcast Nurture the Mind. I am your host, Cole Poots. Thank you guys for joining me once again. And we are going to continue this trend of listening to Sleep Token. So, so far on the channel, I have reviewed Take Me Back to Eden, the title track off of this album. And the second song that I listened to was Ascensionism. So, both in their own right, equally amazing, great songs, great energy, great flows, great transitions. This band is truly one of a kind, and I don't just say that to hype them up even more than they've already been hyped, but there's just so many things that they do well in their music, and you can tell that it's coming from a genuine place, especially when I listen to it, and I get so many different feelings, I get so many different emotions. When I was listening to Ascensionism last week, uh, I was getting kind of emotional there listening to it, uh, those sets of lyrics, and then also just the way that they use their instruments. It's It seems like it's all methodical, and it's driven by some type of plan. Like they probably have had so many conversations while they're making the music and they say, this is how we want to deliver it, um, you know, to the fans and the people that are listening to it. But anyways, without further ado, I am going to stick to this album. It's kind of funny because, you know, typically when I listen to a new album, especially one that I've, you know, really wanted to check out if it's an artist that I really like. Usually what I'll do is I'll block out some time in my day and I'll go through the entire album. So I'll go from track one all the way down to, let's just use this album. For example, I'll go from track one to track 12. That is not how this album has worked out. As I said before in the Take Me Back to Eden reaction, I had listened to The Chokehold and The Summoning a few months back, back to back, but that's as far as I got. I don't really remember what those songs sound like, but then I got the recommendation from my best friend Dakota, and he said, you need to listen to Take Me Back to Eden. So I did that, and then I got so many comments saying, hey, go to Ascensionism. So we're kind of like going all over the place on this album, Take Me Back to Eden, which is track number 11, then we went to Ascensionism, track number six, and then today we're gonna listen to The Apparition. I think that is how it is pronounced. And it's so funny because Take Me Back to Eden was eight minutes and 20 seconds long, Ascensionism was seven minutes and eight seconds long, and now The Apparition is four minutes and 28 seconds, so a lot shorter, but you know, guys, you know my reactions take for fucking ever. It's about half an hour. So you gotta devote at least half an hour to consume this content. Anyways, let's get into it. I'm done talking. I wanna hear the song. What is up next for Sleep Token? Why are you never real? Sounds like alarms. Sound the alarms, guys. Oh, 
phenomenal beat. I'm not surprised. I know these guys are going to switch things up all throughout the songs. Seamless transition. How are they going to close out the song? Just a minute and 30 seconds left. Like a, it's like a broken ice cream truck with that sound, if that made any sense. Okay, and then we fade out. All right, The Apparition by Sleep Token from Take Me Back to Eden. Yeah, man, uh, much to speak on. I mean, it's obviously not as long as the last two songs that I listened to. So I think obviously with those last two songs, there might be a little bit more to speak on. And it definitely feels like in those last two songs, there's more, um, there's more storytelling in between i mean when you, when you have a song that lasts that long obviously there's going to be a lot of like subject matter and context this one you know obviously shorter and a little bit more to the point uh you know i've been reading through your guys's comments and somebody had said that like most or all of sleep tokens discography is about Vessel the singer about his um, a former relationship that he was in and talking about the grieving process and, and how to deal with something like that. And that was my main takeaway from uh, Ascensionism. But even in the apparition, like some of the lyrics, like some things that I really caught on to is him talking about how these memories of the past come back in and pervade his mind and he wakes up in like a suicide frenzy and dude it's so the way they say it in the lyrics the vessel if he's the main writer i don't know if there's anybody else that's writing for the band it paints such a vivid picture and then it's also something that i think most humans can relate to i mean it's certainly if 
you are old enough, you've probably experienced some grief in your life, you've probably experienced some loss, some hardship, you've probably gone through some breakups, you know, somebody that you really loved, and maybe you've gotten betrayed before. I know I certainly have. Um, and so this is weird because it hits me at a time where I feel like I can totally resonate. I'm not going to go into any detail about the situation that I've been going through for the last two or three weeks, but uh, it has to deal with a person, with a partner. You know, just when, when things come to an end, you, you're definitely, your brain is like flooded with all of these emotions, all of these feelings of resentment and anger and frustration, you know, and part of that grieving process, which like I said in the last video, you know, depending on the situation, if you lose somebody in your life, if they pass away unexpectedly or to like suicide or whatever, or if it's a relationship, you know, and you, you cared for that person deeply and then all of a sudden they just got up and left and didn't really give you any type of conversation. Going through situations like that just causes us to kind of, it, it kind of fractures our mentality there for a second. And part of that grieving process is so unpredictable because it's like, you know, one moment you aren't seeing clearly, you know, you just want to rip somebody's fucking head off. And then the next moment, it's like you're spent missing that person. And I can only, I haven't really lost anybody in my life that I was close to or that um, I felt significant about. The only person that I could really speak on is probably Mac Miller. But I have been through my fair share of uh, relationships falling apart, uh, you know, women betraying me, um, being completely immature and just walking away and not able to have tough conversations. And so, you know, for me, like I've always been a very sensitive person, probably a little bit more emotional when I was younger. So I take those things to heart and I think most people would in a situation like this. But yeah, you, you, you spend so much time in that aftermath, like missing that person. And it makes sense. I'm going to use the relationship analogy once again, because with relationships and an intimate relationship, one thing that happens when you get intimate with somebody is your brain and their brain starts to develop these chemicals, one of which I know is called oxytocin, which is the bonding chemical. And so when you're basically like losing that person, you almost in a lot of ways have this drug addiction to them, like you want your next fix. And that's part of the problem in breakups where people, you know, they feel so fucking leveled when things end and part of it is that chemical reaction in our brains is you're somewhat addicted to them and you really just have to get through that initial phase and then eventually clarity starts to come to you later and you're like yeah but like even though I miss them even though we have these great memories even though I'm hyper fixated on the good things that happen you're choosing not to look at you know the red flags the bad situations, the bad moments together. And I'm willing to bet for a lot of people that know what I'm talking about, that have been in really bad relationships, um, emotionally abusive relationships, toxic relationships, been with a narcissist, somebody who will gaslight you. You make so many excuses for that person, even though they are hurting you, even though they are ripping you apart, even though they are not really giving you any solid reason as to why you should stay with them. You focus on the few good moments and you blow those out of proportion. Like, you know, this person, this person is amazing and you're putting them on a pedestal, but you're negating all of the negative things that have happened. And I am certain, I am certainly guilty of that. And I actually, you know, I just realized with this most current situation, it's like, you know, you have to take away lessons 
um, in these breakups and in these moments. And that was one of the things I realized is like my intuition, especially in the beginning and throughout the course of it, you know, pointed out to certain things that I noticed that were wrong, like ways of behaving, you know, things that were being said. But because intuition is just this quick snapshot of what you see of a person, especially when you meet somebody, you have that intuition, but you you don't know if it's necessarily real. We have trained ourselves to not listen to our intuition, to listen to our gut feeling. And so we keep going on and then we try and figure this thing out with like logic and reasoning and facts. And then you have conversations with your friends, with your family members, and you're just trying to sort it out. And although that's really valuable in both of these things that I'm talking about makes sense when you're analyzing a relationship or a situation, part of uh, that intuition is there for a reason. It's there to serve us. It's taking these quick snapshots, making snap judgments. Um, but you also do want to talk about it with other people. My, my point being is that we notice these things right away and we pass off what we notice because we really want it to work out. We really like that person. We like the good moments and how it made us feel. But this is where we have to get a little bit more in tune with our intuition. You like what I did there? Pun. Boom. And again, I'm, I'm just speaking from my current experiences. I realize that I give people the benefit of the doubt sometimes. I see the potential in them. I see the potential in where this thing could go. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, that's always who I have been. But it becomes a problem when you keep giving people the benefit of the doubt when they are saying one thing and they are doing the opposite thing. That is when it is time after you've seen enough uh, experiences um, with that person. That's when it's time to run. That's when it's time to get out of Dodge because you, you can't keep giving second chances, third chances, fourth chance. You can't just keep giving these chances when people are not abiding on uh, their side of the bargain. Like they're not putting in the effort. They're not putting in the work. And so, holy fuck, like this song, but like this band and, and their message and their discography, there's just so many things that you could talk about. So many life lessons. Um, I feel like this band is probably just very deeply philosophical. That's why it's so easy to get lost in these reactions because it makes me think of a certain thing. It makes me think of like my past and situations that I've been through. And then I, you know, then I got to talk about the story. And then we just travel down this rabbit hole and then here we are and i know you guys appreciate it you say it in all the comments but sometimes i feel like i get lost in the weeds of these reactions as far as the music is concerned i'd have to go back and listen to it one more time but from what i remember on that first listen is once again if you guys notice in the beginning from the instrumentation that they use and then the the lyrics that i was reading which again it's probably hitting me a little bit more just because of what I've been going through here recently. Um, but I was kind of starting to tear up. I was starting to get emotional because I can relate to the lyrics, you know, having these vivid memories come through um, of this time that you spent with this person and you're just ultimately sad that things didn't work out because if you could have just gotten a little bit more effort on the other side, I think things could have been a lot different, but then uh, he switches it up and they go into kind of like a rap beat, kind of like a flow. I'm honestly amazed because again, this is a band. It says they fit into the metal genre, but Vessel, um, he does a really good job of flowing and rapping and his cadence. And um, I'm just honestly super impressed by this group because then it gets heavier. I wouldn't say it's my favorite song. I think Take Me Back to Eden still takes the cake so far on this album, but I appreciate every song and the message behind all of them and the deeper meaning of what they're trying to accomplish on this record. And I will obviously have to continue 
to go down go down their discography and see if it still fits this theme of broken relationships, bad relationships, grief, loss, and how do we as humans handle that? That's not a very easy question because like I said in that last video, like it's not a linear process. It tends to be all over the place, so scattered and it's hard because you don't want to always trust your emotions. I mean, emotions can mislead us and take us to the wrong places, but they also serve a purpose. Um, and definitely you're going to feel emotions, you know, when you're going through a hard situations. So it's not about passing them off and not looking at them. It's like you actually got to confront your emotions and then be willing to release them in the end. And I'm getting better at that with age. That is definitely um, become a more liberating process as I've figured out how to process my emotions more and more. So um, that's all I have to say, man. Another really good song. Thank you guys for the recommendation. Um, as always, if you're new to the channel, please like the videos. Please subscribe to my channel. If you enjoy the reaction, if you enjoy my content and the, the reactions that I'm putting out there, then please just share the message. You can share it on social media. You can talk about it with somebody. If, if for some reason you're having a conversation with somebody and you're talking about music, you could be like, yo, I like this band, Sleep Token. And there's this uh, music reactor on YouTube. His name is Cole Poots. He has really good insight to these things. You should go check him out. Um, and then the fourth way is, as I always ask you guys, please, if you have any suggestions, if you have any comments, anything that you want me to check out, anything that you want me to improve on these videos, um, just comment in the comment section below. It's really that easy. And with all of those four things, those are really good ways to push these videos out into the YouTube algorithm and get them in front of more eyes. Um, and that's how the channel grows. I talk about it every single week, but word of mouth is the best way to spread a business, spread a podcast, spread ideas, whatever it is. I mean, that's how it gets out there. So I would appreciate it if you guys did one of those four things, because again, I always come here trying my best in these reactions to give you guys my best take. So, you know, and I put a lot of work into this channel to help it grow. And I would just ask if you guys do your part. But anyways, I'm going to bounce out of here. It's Sunday. I got other things to do. I love you guys. I will see you next week on the next reaction. Take care. Bye-bye.